affordable D&D minis and D&D waffles. <laughs> if you want to see what's going on with these two, stay tuned. But no, seriously, I'm making waffles. So first up, I did want to say a shout out and a thank you to SCS Direct, who were the folks who actually sent over both these minis and the waffle maker uh, for review purposes. I'll also be doing a giveaway of both a set of these as well as the waffle maker. So uh, be sure, not, not these ones, uh, brand new ones that they will ship directly to you. So more about that at the end. But anyway, I don't know if you've seen these around. I have on Amazon whenever I was looking for minis. These come up pretty often and you get a lot for the price, right? So this is 14 unique sculpts. There's a total of 98 figures in here. You've got them in two different colors. We'll open them up and take a closer look in just a sec. Uh, but if you look at the back, oh, I should say you're also gonna get all these for 25 bucks. So, and it's prime shippable. So, uh, you know, for a D&D game, this could be really useful. But we'll take them out and see how they fit up on, um, on like a grid and see how they fit size wise. But it looks like they also have a set of monster figures. Looks like more universal classic style monsters. Second set of fantasy creatures. This is series one. And then it says tabletop uh, mini figures as well in seven races. This may be more what uh, you're looking for potentially for a D&D campaign, although I'm not sure. Uh, but I do see skeletons, kobolds, humans, and gnolls on that. So what we'll do is we will bring in the close cam. We'll open this up and take a look at the different sculpts and kind of get our thoughts on it. So let's go ahead and bring ourselves into the close cam. And then we're just going to cut this open here on the bottom. I get ourselves more in, oops, more in focus. All right. And we'll go ahead and open this up. This is a tape on the side. You can see we have just a ton. And by a ton, I mean 98. All right. So we can see that we've got them in two different colors. We've got a light gray and a dark gray for all these colors. I guess I'm probably going to have to shove these all to the side uh, so we can get a good look at them. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, again, these would be not necessarily, even if you're not going to use them for a DD &D game, these would be kind of a cool thing. I know my son's going to have an absolute blast playing with these. You'd have two different factions, you know, light gray, dark gray. And there's nothing to say you couldn't throw a little paint on these guys as well uh, to change them up if you wanted to. So I guess what we'll do is we'll kind of push them all off to the side. And I buried that warlock tile somewhere in there. All right, here it is. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. So they were not, as far as I could tell, labeled on the box. So it's kind of going to be on us to determine what exactly everything is. Um, okay, so first up here, we've got what I'm going to call like a Sprite or a Pixie. Now, she is a little on the large size. She is fit in a, her base is small and she fits inside a five foot square. But if we were to take a five foot medium sized creature, you can see she's about the same size, maybe a little bit taller, but that's okay. Again, you know, like I said, this is really only a big issue if you're super critical on the size of the creatures matching up, but you can see uh, kind of dissimilar to what we saw with those uh, figures from uh, Walmart, the Jada toys. There is, you know, actual pretty good definition of the face. If we zoom in on the face here, you can actually make out the different facial features, uh, which is nice. Whereas those other ones we saw were just the die cast metal ones. And you can see there's actual texture to the hair. We've got you know, butterfly wings that are really nice. And then again, even like little flowers down here on the base. So we've got our pixie. That is number one of our 14 different sculpts. Next is one that is, oh, these kind of stuck together. Peel these guys apart. Uh, is a griffin. So if we zoom out. Now this on a D&D grid, if we take a look at it, looks like this one's going to be, well, you know, typically uh, a large creature in a D&D grid is supposed to be two by two, right? 10 uh, total feet. So this will, if you kind of put it on a little bit of an angle, like if you put it straight on, it's going to be 15 feet as far as a grid goes. But the sculpt on this is actually pretty good. You can see again, we've got the nice, uh, the feathers here and we can see the wings here as well. Uh, and this one, I think when you start to get to the larger creatures, you're going to have less of an issue if the size is slightly off. Um, it's usually more with like the humanoids that 
typically people have an issue. But again, if you angle this, you can fit this in pretty much a 10 foot grid. Um, so we've got a griffin, which is pretty nice here. Put the griffin to the side. Uh, we have a dragon. There's the dragon, here it is. Uh, you know, mine are a little bit, see this, mine are a little bit stuck together here. Um, but, you know, I can just kind of peel them apart. So we have a dragon, similar in the size uh, category to, although again, this one does, you could angle it, like I said, and fit it inside a 10 foot, um, 10 foot grid if you needed to. But the dragon has, you know, you can see actual texture on all the scales, the underbelly here, even like the joints, shoulder joints. We've got our wings and these are, you know, it's just like a softer plastic. We can bend these out of the way. Those are gonna just kind of conform back. There is a little bit of flashing here that you could trim off. I don't know if you can see that right, um, right here. Uh, so we could just kind of like take a knife and probably cut that off with like an X-Acto knife or something if you were really worried about it. But you know, uh, the base is also kind of like this is not attached at the end. So the base is a little kind of floppy and looks like it was just sort of cut on an angle. So we could cut the base right here. This is just plastic. I'm sure we could cut this with a pair of scissors, heavy duty scissors or something if you wanted to make the base a little bit smaller. But this is a pretty, you know, like generic dragon shape. So we could use this to pretty much represent any kind of dragon, green, red, black, whatever kind you want. And it looks like you do have a bunch of them in here. So we can go ahead and, uh, you know, make multiple options. So move our dragon off to the side. Looks like we've got a dwarf here. Um, and our dwarf is, Got a big ass great axe here, but you can see again, beard, horns on the helmet. You've got some even definition on the shoulder armor, chain mail here. Even like his little boots have definition to them. So once again, he's a dwarf. This is technically a human character. They're about as tall, but you know, again, not bad for what it is. And you know, I even have some old like Ralpatha minis that are about like they're they're larger than like what we consider minis to be nowadays so this isn't bad so so far we've seen a pixie a dragon a griffin and a dwarf this looks like maybe um maybe this is supposed to be i think maybe like an orc maybe an ogre um we've got we do have tusks here uh, and we have a mohawk kind of pointy ears uh sort of like a loincloth thing going on as well as a uh you know like a leather strap you can even see that you can even see the holes in the strap and the buckle on the strap there is a little bit of like uh, i don't know if that's mold release or something here and like even little skulls down here on the base uh and his axe my only small complaint was i would have probably had the axe head facing the other way um and there's look there's even like a little bone down here so this, again, you know, he might be a little bit taller than my human character or my half-elf character, and my half-elf character is also kind of crouching. So this is actually pretty good, you know, as far as things go. Uh, and we'll have to end up seeing how many we actually get of each in here. Um, and if you're uh, smarter than I am at the moment, you could have done that math already. Now this is, this is, I guess, like a knight. Um, he does fit pretty much in he's a little wobbly as you can see he does fit inside a five foot grid Maybe a little bit on an angle, but this dude is huge. He's got sort of a he gives me like a dark souls kind of vibe With his armor here um, Or like a crusade. I guess that's a cross so This is more of like a crusade type and we can see the shield looks like the little center piece of the shield is a little bit off center um, he just looks a little too tall to me like he's kind of off-putting But maybe you could use this as like a statue um, If you painted this kind of like gray or maybe bronze um, You could do this up as a statue uh, But we can even see there's there's detail on the bracers here as well. I don't know if you can make that out, but um, You know, I, I do enjoy this. This is again I think that this for me would be maybe like an automaton or a statue of some kind um, What else we got? Okay, we got a unicorn Everybody loves a good unicorn mini. We'll zoom that out a little bit. And the unicorn, again, fits in a 10-foot uh, a space, or you could, again, angle it to fit in its true 10 by 10 space. But the unicorn, we got a little, we've got flowers on the base and like a grass around the bottom. 
uh, you know, again, no, uh, no real, you know, there's a little, like I said, there's a couple of lines here, uh, some mold lines a little bit here on the, right below the tail here, you can see. Um, but again, all in all, not bad. Uh, and know it's pretty stable. And that, if you put that, you know, a unicorn next to a half elf, that's a pretty decent size comparison. This is rearing up. And again, my half elf is crouching. That's not bad, you know? And again, um, if I find one, we do have, uh, as I said before, we do have them in two different colors. So, uh, although this unicorn is a little, um, this one, I don't know if that's just the bend in the mold, but this one is not, uh, rearing up as high. It's kind of more low to the ground. It's probably supposed, oh yeah, it just bent. It's supposed to be up like that more. And because of the nature of this soft plastic, I bet you could hit this with a hairdryer, a heat gun, or some boiling water and readjust them to where you want to be. And as long as they stay in that, when they cool down, they'll probably adjust and be that size, um, you know, the same kind of techniques you'd use for Reaper minis, I think you could use for these. But again, we have two different, we have a dark gray and a light gray. So again, if you had different people and you wanted to differentiate, whether it be enemies on the battlefield or, you know, mounts, you could just keep them as is. You could easily paint these. Like I said, I'm sure these things with a little bit, with a good primer, maybe a little scuff sanding and a primer, these things would take paint pretty easily. Um... Or, you know, just leave them as it is. All right, so we've got the griffin, the dragon, the sprite, the dwarf, I guess the sort of crusader knight, the orc, the unicorn. What else do we have in here? Ah, we have like a, a Medusa Naga type creature. Now this one is a definitely wobbly, but we can see we do have a snake tail and it does end in uh, a rattle, which is cool. And uh, there is some pretty serious separation of the of the mold here. Um, and it looks like it is obviously a female here and no actual snake hair. Um, so this could be, you know, you could use this possibly as like a U on T if you needed to. Uh, we do have some like bangles on upper arm bangles. And I think this is supposed to be a spear, but it obviously got a little bit bent in shipment. So we could just bend this back. And, you know, again, with hot water. Um, so this does take up a lot of space on your grid in comparison to your human. But I think there is a um, a mythical creature, like a Greek mythology-based creature, that was kind of like a Medusa, but used its tail to um, petrify people rather than its gaze. I could be making that up, um, but that could be good for this. Again, you could use this as um, different kinds of UNT, um, have the snake tail maybe a naga type creature if uh you know not a traditional naga but you know maybe your game's version of a naga um okay what else we got in here oh we've got uh a skeleton okay this is a big ass base for this skeleton but the sculpt is pretty good you can make out the individual ribs you can even see the spinal column he's got kind of like a trojan style like skirt here he's got the, again the kind of Spartany Trojany helm here standing upon a pile of skulls so I guess maybe his brethren but the base is a little on the oversized side but you could probably trim this base and this would fit in a five foot square again he's a little bit taller maybe it's a goliath skeleton or something like that than my half elf um, but I even like the little detail of him kind of standing on a mound of skulls and his uh, he's got a little design here on his shield that's not bad though you know for the amount like you know usually when you're going to run something like skeletons or orcs uh potentially you're going to want to have multiple of them because usually one of them is not enough for a challenge for a party so having a couple not a bad idea all right what else we got in here oh this makes sense we have a minotaur we were in a very kind of fantasy greek theme going on here as as we seem to have lately in D, &D. so we have a minotaur um again Taller than a half elf, but that makes sense. Got some serious abs on him here. Um, it's got a little bit of a, like a club. And we can see you know, the horns, not too much on to this sculpt. Uh, his loincloth only covers the front, but you know, not a big deal. Uh, and then again, like I said, you can kind of see the flashing from the mold on the bottom here. But again, that's easy enough to remove if you need to. Okay, and here is a 
what is this? This is, I guess, an, a female elf with a tiny ass bow. <laughs> uh, so her ears are poking out of her hair. So that makes me think maybe elf. She does have sort of a flower base here. Um, she does kind of have some sort of, uh, there's actually intricate little designs here on like the back of her skirt, texture to her hair. Um, and she's got kind of like a bodice on, but like this bow, this tiny ass little bow, little short bow, maybe. Um, again, she'll fit in a five foot square. She's a little on the oversized for, um, again, depending, maybe she's a fur bog, maybe she's a Goliath, I don't know. But for standard size, although again, like I've been saying, if like perfect sizes doesn't matter to you based on like, you know, oh, the tiny creature isn't tiny on the map. Like if that doesn't bother you, then this is fine. You know, there's a little, a little bit of a, like a, a, a marring there imperfection. But that's not so bad. That's easily hideable if you're sanding or painting these. All right, so let's see what we've got. We've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven total mini sculpts. What are we missing? Uh, oh, we've got our typical graybeard wizard here. Uh, again, he is a little tall, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. He's a very kind of stereotypical wizard i'd say kind of a gandalfy type he's got the long draping robes the kind of gnarled looking staff he's got his wizard hat he's got a little pouch maybe a component pouch here on his belt uh, again this one happens to have a little separation from the mold but like, easily fillable with green stuff or you know, even hot glue or something so again still not bad though right for the size and the amount how much you're getting um well, we have a, uh, a centaur, okay? Um, so he's got a little fistful of arrows here. His bow, much more regular size, and he is fitting on a 10, you know, a, a 10 feet grid, and you could put him in the center. Um, and that, I'd say that, like compared to the human, or to a half elf, you know, I think that's a pretty solid comparison, like size-wise. Got some abs. Um, Got, you can even see, like, look at all look, the scraggly beard hair. He's got the mustache. I'm impressed with the definition of these minis for, you know, for how many you're getting for the price. All right, so we've got our centaur. Oh, we've got, like, a, a two-headed... I mean, I'm going to call it an Etten because that's what I've been learned, you know, know to call these things as per D&D. &D. But it's got, like, a little skullish necklace here. Maybe, like, an Oni type. Two heads, two horns, one horn. Again, different faces with tusks. We've got, again, sort of like a loincloth skirt kind of going on here. Little pointy elbow barbs uh, and a big wooden club. Again, you know, it's it's a pretty, it's a little undersized for a true Etten, but maybe this is like a kind of funky orc or something. But you're going to get eight total minis of a given sculpt. Uh, and then again, half of those are going to be in the light gray. Half of those are going to be in the dark gray. So, um, like I said, my biggest, I guess, nitpicks with these would be, uh, you know, I personally am a fan of size accurate minis when it comes to um, the grid. If I'm doing a battle map, just because I happen to have so many minis already, that helps. But again, if you're not, you, these also might be good. Like I said, uh, maybe you're just getting started into the world of minis and you wanted something quick and affordable to cover some generic D&D type creatures. Uh, or maybe you're just going to get these for your kids to play with, give them something to occupy themselves during quarantine. These seem, you know, they're pretty durable and they're kind of bendy because they're made out of, uh, you know, an injected plastic. So you're not going to have to worry about these things really breaking. Uh, and like I said, you could probably do fun and interesting things with them if you heat them up or, or cool them down and, you know, bend them in certain ways. Um, but yeah, I'll have a link in the description to go ahead and pick up one of these if you want. There'll be an affiliate link. And then I'll have, uh, I'll be doing a giveaway of a box of these as well. Uh, next up, we're going to jump over to the kitchen to do the waffle maker side of things.
All right, so here we have the new Dungeon Hero Waffle Maker. You can see it's got five different hero options, the Archer, Wizard, Cleric, a Warrior, and Rogue. So we're going to go ahead and open this thing up, and then we're going to make some waffles. All right, so we can go ahead, and you can see we've got some styrofoam on either side. Here's our little instructions. We'll look at those in a sec. We'll go ahead and take this out of the box. If I can just get a little help here, pulling this thing out of the box. There we go. All right, we've got our two pieces of styrofoam. We'll take that off. Here's our plastic wrapper. And you can see here is our little waffle maker. Not uh, pretty small, all things considered. We've got our little, you know, uh, it stands upright, it looks like, to kind of store it. It stands upright like that. I'll go ahead and open this thing up. Take this little paper out, and here you can see our five different heroes. So now we're going to just plug this thing in and heat it up. Should heat up, it says, in uh, just a couple seconds or a couple minutes here. And then we should be able to cook waffles in three to five minutes. <laughs> Cooking spray, and let's put in our batter here into our five individual trays. And shut. All right, three to five minutes later, we'll take out our waffles. There we go. First up is our archer. There we go. Then our wizard coming out next. Right here. Got our rogue right here coming out. All right, then we have next up is our warrior right here coming out and there he is right there and then lastly is our cleric there we go and our, our, our five waffles from our dungeon waffle maker you like that mm -hmm. and most importantly what for your towel easy clean up just wipe everything down dry it off and it's ready to go for the next time so there you have it we have gone through all of the different minis we've done the waffle maker to showcase how that works as well and i gotta say i'm a big fan of the waffles because especially as someone who has kids sometimes like plopping a full waffle down in front of a kid they're like ah, i don't really want to do that but if you give them mini waffles it's just something in their head they like the idea of small food um, plus like their little characters, they can enjoy that. Um, I mean, and you know, I like it too. So, uh, I, so somehow in my brain don't feel as bad if I eat five mini waffles as if I did, if I ate one big one or you feel like you're getting more waffles than, you know, you are, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I really enjoyed this. So thank you again to SCS direct for sending out all this stuff to take a look at for me. Uh, like I said, I have been curious about these minis for a long time. Um, and I'm glad I actually got the chance to take a look at them and make a little kind of video for all of you. Um, and again, uh, I, the Waffle Maker surprise uh, winner. I really enjoyed that. So as far as the giveaway goes, I will have a link in the description to a short running Gleam giveaway. It's only going to run for a week. So a week from when you're watching this video, I will end the Gleam giveaway. Uh, and that's the standard stuff. All you got to do is do the, the follow thing. Uh, and then you'll be able to enter to win two separate winners, one for the minis, one for the waffle maker. Uh, and then I will contact you, get your information, get that over to them, and then they will arrange to sh ship it out to you via Amazon. So this was a little bit different. Um, it was more like a toy kind of mini unboxing type thing. But it's D&D related and, you know, they reached out and I thought it was pretty cool. So let me know your thoughts on this video and the different things discussed in here in the comments down below. Uh, thank you again to my patrons on Patreon for continuing to support the channel. And I will see you all next time.